Alright guys, this is a tutorial of me coloring on my desktop. Yeah, I go. Alright, I have everything in flat colors. By the way, I'm using GIMP. Alright, because I got a Linux operating system. Alright, I just selected um, some flat color that I laid out. This whole page was in flat color. Alright, let's not be maximized this year. Right, and now I just zoom in. If you hear a lot of clicking, it's because I'm using my mouse to do this. Yes, I'm using my mouse to do this. Alright, here I go. So I just laid down the base color, like I said, which is flat colors. The secondary color is the shadows and the lights. Right, is the lighter color. Now I just lay down the shallow color around this guy's face, and the primary, the the third color, right, that I, I choose. Guy use like three colors to shade out. The cut, the third color is gonna create like a light source to kind of make it look three dimensional. That color normally goes in the middle right now my mouse is moving a little slow because I'm recording my desktop and my computer is slow because I gotta get a faster processor all I could do I just use this which is like the gradient tool that will you know grade it out to you know offer give me a faster result uh, just minimize my brush size and I'm going by the, the mouth area right here. You know, give it like a more slender light source. And like I said, my computer is moving slow because I'm recording myself and it always does this every time I move, recording myself. And well, coloring for me is a bit of a tedious process. tedious process and then I do my brush size <coughs> and then I lighten the grays around his chin area so it don't look too harsh you know the more faded it look the more you know, um, of a roundness you will get in this guy's chin. So I just gotta, all that high shadows, I gotta fade it out. Let me see, I just turn up my opacity a little bit because it might be too low. Normally I go to my breast size opacity be like around 12. But I just gonna yeah lighten it up a little bit. Then I just hit this with a little brush, you know, on the shadows, so it don't be too harsh. You know, like I said, you know, and then you gotta be kind of aware of where you want the light to hit um, certain areas, and where you want the shallow shadows to hit you know is according to where your light source is coming from you know pretty much like drawing and shading but this is just doing it on a computer and doing it with colors you know if you guys look to the right here my screen right what I'm dipping out of is a color palette and I labeled right here all the names of the characters get them their own colors and stuff you know listed right here all right um you know for human skin you know it, it might say uh <laughs> it says white people but um you know that's just to differentiate different human skins you know this that's just a color palette i use for all you know the white people characters i got in my book Oops, somebody popped up on Skype. It's fading all the harshness around his chin area. 
and it's moving slow so I can't move fast and it's frustrating me but I gotta just deal with it I guess now yep being the perfectionist that I am I want this to look pretty pretty small let me turn the opacity down but I look pretty harsh I don't want any I don't want um, any pencil strokes to appear on the image that's why I'm playing around with the opacity of the pencil making sure that it's not too harsh when I do it when I do it <laughs> yep. and I just keep brushing along these areas and slowly but surely you could see it actually looks more three-dimensional with the colors as I you know color certain areas lighter and darker don't you see it uh, I hope so also I'm not doing my job that good and you know although it might be tedious this is a lot of fun for me to do believe it or not and uh, I just wanted to point something out before I do this section here with a little bit of white to show like a light source hidden his lip area alright uh, let me point something out as you guys could see right along here are these moving dirty looking type of lines that would be the area I selected like if I try to color outside of that area choose a darker color it ain't gonna happen but if I color inside that area see that stroke I hope you guys could see it and it happened with control Z so make sure you select your image first before you try color inside you know or else you're gonna spill colors out of the image and that won't look too cool doing that you want to spill no colors outside of the image now some people use a Wacom but I use a mouse because it's easier for me I could buy a Wacom you know it's only a couple hundred bucks, but I rather use a mouse because that's how I learned to color, and it just seems so much easier for me to do it like that. All right, and I'll just do this little area right here. And of course I like zooming in really close to make sure when it is printed and is a small image it looks a little bit more detailed because I actually zoomed in into his face Normally when I'm doing this too, you hear the TV playing in the back of me and I'll be like actually watching TV while doing this. Alright, we gotta increase the shadow area so his face will pop out more. Go around the chin area. And this area under his chin, give it a little bit more shadow, a little bit more shadow, drop a little white around here to make the light source look a little bit more permanent. It's not control Z. I use the gradient tool because uh, that was a little too harsh and that's still too harsh so I turn the opacity down on the gradient tool down to about 50 half of that 
harshness. And then I go on the gradient tool. Uh, Control Z, still a little too harsh. So I'll turn it down to about 35, and then I dab it with the gradient tool again. Hmm, that's a little better. And then I go to his lip area and then give it a little bit more light right there. And that's about it. That's just one section. And you zoom out, take a look at it. Looks just about right. And then I gotta color this entire page. So I gotta actually go in to like his foot area. Let me take a place that I didn't color shade out as yet. That would be his foot area. I just click on this section like that. I use this tool right here because this actually soaks up the color. And then when I soak the color up, it selects it over here. Alright, this is where the color is. And if I click on this square right here, it brings up different variants of the color. And I go for a darker tone because that's how I want my shadows. My shadows got to be darker, my light got to be lighter. And. You know, I normally use three colors. People, some people use four and stuff like that. But I know my light source is coming from this direction, like right here. Bow. Right here is the light source behind Striker and Gulliver Bugs and these characters over here. And it hits his foot from that point, like coming from that direction. So I gotta hit back here where there's no light with shadow shadow area right remember your light source is your key to making your object look three dimensional go on his foot right here when it don't have too much light you know not too much light on this his curve area by his curves alright not too much light and then I go to his actual foot right here right and I add a little deeper shadow by keep stroking on the pencil tool and his upper over his calf right here just to make it look wrong I add a little shadow where the light is not getting true to his uh, side of the foot I'll make the object look a little bit more three-dimensional. Make your art pop out when it's not in flat color. Make shade in it too. And then when I'm done with that, instead of clicking on this again and switching the color out, I click this little arrow tool right here, which switches over to the other color. Then. I click that color, but I want to get this color here, so I just do like that. Get that little gradient soak up tool, then I click on the flat color, then I go into the lighter version of that color, hit OK, and then I start doing where I want the light source to hit to make it look like it's three dimensional. Alright, so that's it for now. I don't want the video to be too long because then I wouldn't be able to upload it. But you guys get the picture. Just now, let me get this gradient tool here. Try to pull a light gradient from that point. Alright, and then do it one more time until I, it looks roundish. You know, so the curve right here, this section looks round then you gotta understand what it is you draw or where you want you know your light source to come from alright so that's about it that's coloring a page with Nigel Carrington and GIMP that's not a zoom out too far 
right so it takes you know a little time to make sure your work looks all right but this is like uh page what two of until issue six all right i hope you guys like it when i'm finished with it see you guys later yeah how do i get out of this